Today we're going over how to make this 3D printer enclosure. What's special about this enclosure? Well, it's printable, meaning all you need is your 3D printer. It can be FDM or resin. It's modular, meaning you can build it to fit any size printer. It comes with a ton of accessories like filament holders, tool holders, exhaust ducts, and my favorite, it comes in a ton of awesome custom themes. Let's do it. The information on the files is all linked below. Now, once we download them, we can see the different file folders for the different parts of the enclosure. Step one, let's start with the frame. Inside of the frame folder, we can see the STL files and the quantities to print. So I'm gonna fire up all the printers now and get this printing. I'll be printing it on a few different machines. This includes the Prusa XL, the Bamboo X1 Carbon, the P1S, and the Prusa MK4, which I have right here. However, any standard FDM printer will work. All of the files come pre-split for printing on any standard size machine. So for example, you can see here, the file name is bottom corner part underscore four QTY. So we're gonna print four of these. Now, the entire enclosure can be printed with almost zero supports and included with the file delivery is a PDF that shows exactly where to put each support on each file. For example, we'll check this one out specifically, the bottom corner part, I'll show it on the screen now, you can see it only needs a little bit of support on this connecting tab. Let's get started with this one and then I will get the entire frame printed out. So here are all the frame pieces, let's get building. First thing that we wanna build is the bottom portion of the frame. The easiest way to do this is to look at this photo here and simply just match up your pieces to this one. The only note that I have is to make sure that your corner pieces shown in blue on this picture are pointing up. It's really easy to get those confused. Now, I like to connect them all using just the connectors without the screws and then once everything's together and it looks good, we can make sure that the printer fits inside of the enclosure and then go ahead and connect all the pieces with the actual fasteners. We'll do that in just a second. Next up, we can build the top portion of the frame in the exact same way that we built the bottom, this time just using the STL files that were labeled top. Again, check out the image and the instructions if you get at all confused. It's easy to just match yours up to that one. Now, finally, we can go ahead and stack the modular pieces to determine the height of our enclosure, connect the bottom and the top, and there we have our frame. At this point, let's go ahead, put the 3D printer in there and make sure that there is sufficient space in the X, Y, and Z directions. If so, we're good to keep going. If not, you may need to print another few modular pieces and extend the size of your enclosure. For common 3D printers like the Ender or the Prusa, we've already included standard file delivery folders that have the quantities for those printers. Now that it's all together, we can get use of our nifty fasteners. Simply put in the two nuts, connect the two frame pieces with it, and then fasten the screws from the other side. The connector looks like a little bit of overkill, but that is actually version two of the fastener because we wanted to make sure that it holds the screws in place prior to actually fastening them. This alone, this little change will save us about 20 minutes just from dropping the screws into the frame. Nice. So. Next, let's build the door of our enclosure. For the door, we can either make an acrylic door or an entirely 3D printed door. For this video, I'm gonna go ahead and make the acrylic door, but I will show you the 3D printed door version too. Again, we just go into the file folder, print all of the pieces with the recommended quantities. I'm gonna print those now, and then let's get it all put together. So you'll see for the door, we have the hinges, the corner brackets, the side brackets, and some small mounting pieces for the acrylic. First thing to do, let's attach the hinges to the corners and then let's get the brackets mounted to the frame. Now all that we have to do is pop the acrylic into the hinges and for this part, the easiest thing is to just use some super glue because the 1 8 inch acrylic is super lightweight, glue is more than enough. Just make sure that you line up the acrylic perfectly before actually letting the glue set. Finally, let's also glue on the acrylic tab so that we have a nice seal between the two doors when we're all done. Now we get to pick how we wanna do the sides for the enclosure. They can be acrylic, they can be 3D printed flat sides, they can be 3D printed theme sides, or as a 3D printed pegboard. Now, for this enclosure, I'm going to make it with all acrylic sides. I want a fully clear enclosure, as I'm actually gonna put this one on display in the middle of the office. But I do wanna show you the modular pegboard option. It's definitely the best in terms of function, which is why I made it on the huge enclosure over there. Again, in the file folder, just download and 3D print all of the pegboard files. Once that's done, you'll end up with something that looks like this. 
Now let's get the supports removed and assemble the pieces. Also worth noting, you can actually print these support free. You'll notice all the supports on here. I just wanted to print a ton of them at a time. So I made custom tree supports and printed them vertically. Now, the cool thing about this pegboard is that it can be used on the inside and the outside of the enclosure. So you can put everything from tools and spool holders and things like that on the outside. And then on the inside, you could put a camera or sensors to monitor your printer, tons of accessories to choose from. So once we have that side built, you can see how awesome this looks. Again, I got the full size pegboard on the enclosure over there. And I actually have a third enclosure printing that I'm gonna use this one here for. So let's put this away for a second and let's get back to the all acrylic sides on the one that we're building now. Next up, let's build an acrylic side. Now, when building acrylic sides, just note the order that you put them onto the frame. This order should be the door and then the sides and then the back and then the top. Why this is important is because if you put them on in a different order, uh, you might be stuck not being able to actually access the screws to put on one of the other sides. If that doesn't make any sense, just trust me and do it in that order. I've built quite a few of them, so that's the way to do it. Also worth noting is that the acrylic, if you get the files, you will also get a link to a discounted pre-cut acrylic store. That's one option. You can also just get one eighth inch acrylic at most hardware stores or even on Amazon. You can cut it yourself or you can have a shop cut it, but it should be cheaper in the store uh, from the link there. All we do with the acrylic, let's attach the edge pieces to the acrylic and then actually just fasten that right to the frame. Okay, next up would be the themed sides, but I actually already made a giant enclosure that is fully themed out with the dwarven themes. For the themed sides, you'll actually just print all of the themed pieces glue those together and then stick that right on the enclosure. Uh, in the campaign, there's a bunch of really cool themes available while I go through and put on the rest of the acrylic sides to this frame. Now you can see our enclosure is really coming together. It's almost completely done. There's just a few awesome extra add-ons that I want to show you. One of them is the LEDs, which I think are great, especially if you're doing time lapses. It also just makes the entire thing, especially if you have a theme on there, a full cool showpiece for your home or office. Next, I like to add on the duct accessories to keep fumes out of the office. Honestly, this is one of my favorite features. If you have a printer at home, definitely consider this one just for safety reasons. Now the enclosure that I built today is totally random colors. I was honestly just using any spools that I had left over around the office. Um, but as you can see, it came out pretty darn well and it is ready for you. So that is how we build the printable accessories modular enclosure. I hope you like this video. Everything is linked below. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can drop them below and I will get back to you as fast as I can. Happy printing and as always have a wonderful day.